Jake Hughes. How are you, my friend? Yeah, good, and you? Yeah, very good. Uh, reserve driver last year for Mercedes EQ. We never actually spoke, uh, but now you're third on the grid in the brand new McLaren Neon team. How do you feel? Uh, happy, to be honest. It's been a good weekend so far, but to be honest, ever since testing in Valencia, it's gone pretty well for me so far in Gen 3 era. It seems to suit uh, my driving style quite well. Why, why? Explain to us. I don't know, to be honest. It's just, I, I seem to, I like a lot of a car that's on the nose, to be honest. Um, what does that mean? A lot of front end, no understeer. Okay. Um, and somehow, whatever we're doing with setup or what I'm doing with my driving seems to come naturally. All five lights are on, and we go green in Mexico City. It's a decent getaway from Degrassi. It's a very good start from Jake Hughes. Jake Hughes in the orange McLaren to the outside of turn one. Can't quite do it. Sasha Fenestrand is going full attack into the first corner, and he's got ahead of Sebastian Buemi. Everybody's safely through the first turn with Degrassi leading in the Mahindra. Dennis is second in the Andretti. Third is Jake Hughes. Hughes defending into turn one. Same energy as Degrassi. Whoa, Lotter of forces it around the outside. Hughes holds the inside line coming into turn three. And how much pressure is Lotter under from Buemi? A bit, but he manages to keep it together. How racy is De Costa? De Costa goes to the outside at the back of the queue in the Porsche. There's a bit of contact between uh, Lotter and Hughes ahead of him. Fenestraz has now dropped out of the points and down into oh, 13th there place. And there's the move. That's a slippery, I think it's a slippery surface flag now. I don't think it's a yellow anymore there at the chicane. So that seems like a legitimate move for Lotterer. He's got him into fourth place. Hughes drops down to fifth. Third is going to be Degrassi. He comes out the final corner now and takes the checkered flag. Okay, that's checkered flag, mate. Copy. Yeah. Oh, we talk afterwards about balance and things like that, guys, but. I think all things considered, that's a, that's a good result. Well done, everyone. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure first weekend. Let's keep going from here. Oh, and Hughes has built the gap up to a quarter of a second, but he's arriving a bit sideways at 14. Evans closes the gap a little more. Hughes on rails out of 16. Evans across the line. It's an 8.797, slower than he did in the semi-finals, but it's now just 800s the gap. Can Hughes hang on? He just has to hit his marks here, the final two corners. Oh, oh the gap's down to again. seven thousandths of a second. It all comes down to the final corner in the battle for pole. And it's Hughes. He's taking it. Hughes finds a tenth of a second in the final turn. And for the first time, we'll start on pole position in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Rene Ras delighted for his young teammate. You won it, mate. Pole position, well done. Good job, good job. <laughs> and he almost did the exact same lap time as his semi-final. Yeah. So how's that for consistency? Oh, I'm buzzing, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm still trying to calm down. Um, yeah, like P3 in Mexico, P2 yesterday, P1 today is a nice trend. So we were sort of joking about it yesterday and this morning, but to actually achieve it in my third third race in Formula E is pretty special. And, but all the credit goes to the team, you know. I've been a part of this team for two or three years now, and, and they've prepared me as well as I think any rookie's ever been. So that's a credit to them. In his first three Formula E races, Hughes will have started third, second, and now first. Round three of the championship. Hughes on pole, Evans alongside him, all five lights are on. We go green in Diria. It's a reasonable start from Hughes. Evans is coming at him, and Evans is going to get him into turn one. Evans, can he take the lead of the Epre? He can, from the dirty side of the grid. Mitch Evans has taken the lead. There's a bit of contact with Sam Bird into the back of Eduardo Mortara, coming into the second part of the chicane. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you got pushed over, but you got it, mate. You didn't lose the position. Well done. Right. Yeah, that's got no power. Yeah, no worries. Oh, we, yeah. It was a good drive, mate. Oh, got good points. Five, good points. Sasha Fenestraz there is lining up second on the grid. A very, very strong performance from him.
thought he had the pole position till it was taken away due to a technical infraction, but that meant that Jake Hughes has his second pole position of the season. The British driver lining up at the front, looking to take his first Formula E victory. He's not actually had a podium yet in Formula E, Jake Hughes, despite his very strong qualifying performances. Hughes on pole, Fenestras alongside him, and we go green in Monaco. Pretty good getaway from Hughes, a bit of sliding, and look at Gunter in the blue Maserati to the outside, in towards Sandevot. A big send from Nick Cassidy. He's gained a few places immediately as they now climb the hill up Beau Ravage. Hughes holds the lead. Jake Hughes has activated attack mode and therefore has lost the lead. So Sasha Fenestras into the lead. And Hughes is going side by side here with Tictum. Oh, one of the Matt said Tictum, yeah, in the Neil. Okay, that's the checker flag, P5, well done mate, that's good points. Good job everyone. Could have been better, but it, to be honest that could have been a lot worse. So, good points. Yeah, no, well, d well done for surviving, that, uh, that wasn't an easy race was it mate, so well done, good job. Vern was quicker, just by a hundredth of a second or so in that second sector, and now just one corner remaining here for Jean-Eric Vern. What is the lap time going to be for the double Formula E champion in the DS Penske? He comes to the timing line, it's at 116.783, but now it's all eyes on this man here for Jake Hughes as he comes around the final corner and to the line. Is it pole? Yes, it is! A 116.53, a pole position, number three for Jake Hughes in the Neon McLaren here for round seven in Mazzano. Yeah, not bad, mate, not bad. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me, mate. Talk to me. Easy, easy. Well, there we are. Jake Hughes takes pole position for round seven in the sunshine here in the San Marino region of Italy. Van Dorn under pressure, Hughes building out the advantage, aiming for his second pole position of 2024. Just two more corners now remaining as we come through into turn 12. Out of the corner we go, across the timing line, Hughes versus Van Dorn. It's so close, one thousandth of a second in it, and Jake Hughes does it and takes pole position by the tightest margin we've ever seen in Formula E. Jake Hughes is on top for the second time in 2024. That will do. So what? Did we get it? That felt awful. One. Did we get it? One thousand. You got it, mate. <laughs> one thousand. I have a bit of that son. Jake, you are going to owe me some serious medication after that, mate. I tell you. Well done. Jake Hughes then, pole position number two in 2024. Can he convert it into his first podium finish of the season with a 28 lap E Prix on the way this afternoon? It's lights out and we're underway. Good start for Jake Hughes, not bad. Also from Stoffel Van Orn off the front row. Keep an eye out for De Costa trying to challenge as we head three wide down towards the first corner. Van Dorn on the inside, Hughes slots into second. De Costa does indeed slot into third place. So Nato it is that leads then at the beginning of the eighth lap of the race. Then it's the Costa. Then you've got Van Dorn, but not for long because Hughes is through and into third position. Cassidy's front wing is damaged from that moment there with Hughes in turn one. That could be massively detrimental to him. You can see Hughes here is really trying to expend energy. He's just had the hurry up from his race engineer, Alan Cox, as he looks for the inside line at turn seven. Nato's trying to firm it around the outside, but can Hughes keep a wheel on the inside? Close quarters between the two for second. A slip and a slide there for Hughes. He's going to go around the outside. Hughes sitting in second and Norman Nato in third. What a fantastic commanding control drive from Antonio Felix da Costa. Jake Hughes takes his first ever podium in Formula E. Good job mate, good job. Set flag, P2, P2. First podium, brilliant drive. Absolutely brilliant drive mate, well done. May after yesterday, that just shows the calibre of driver that you are. Well done, congratulations. Thanks, you guys. Dumb, dumb, everyone. Honestly, don't get me wrong, I'm happy, but I'm so much more happy than you guys. Honestly, the last three months have been hard. Well done, you all deserve that so much. It's about 26 races too late, something like that, anyway. <laughs> Quang Zidane, the Girls on Track programme representative, presenting a second place trophy to Jake Hughes for his first visit on the rostrum. Very well deserved the man who turns 30 on Thursday, just to remind him again.
He's gonna love that. <laughs>